Good morning, good morning, good morning. And welcome to Breakfast of Champions hosted by Merlin Denise Coaching Services. My name is Ms. Cookie Williams, along with my dynamic co-host, partner in crime and in life, Ms. Nene DJ Houston. Oh my goodness. And thank you, Nene, for that wonderful, oh man. Jesus has given us new life. God bless you. Oh my goodness, that is so, so <laughs> true. What a wonderful way to open up this week. We do have a dynamic week this week and uh, I just want y'all to know that uh, you are welcome and to say good morning to everyone that's in our YouTube. And if, it, if there's anything else I'd like for y'all to just, if you wanna join us live, just Tap into www.MarylandDeniseCoachingServices.com. And that is, yeah, it's a beautiful thing. Uh, and then I want everyone that's on the line right now, if you would, please just take a minute before we even get started and shoot this link to uh, at least five to six people. The link is in the chat. So you don't have to, tap to look for it and just, just share this morning because I'm telling you, we have a dynamic week, a dynamic week. Our week is going to be, this week we're going to be talking about necessary adjustments. Last week we talked about uh, changing lanes and in changing lanes, you got to make some necessary adjustments. So this morning we're going to have Miss Merlin on and getting us started. And because this is the 22nd, the last week of May. Wow, already. And as I was thinking about that, this is my one year anniversary in this room. And I am grateful to God for that. I have seen some dynamic changes in my life just from being in this room. And I know that's so true. And so I'm, I'm ready to get started on the necessary adjustments. I think our subtitle is going to be uh, uh, liabilities and assessments. And then on Tuesday, we're gonna have Mr. Harlan Bell on the line. And we're still gonna be on necessary adjustments all week, but his subtitle is going to be managing adjustments in relationships. On Wednesday, we're going to have Miss Joyce Lynn and, and Miss Charlene Lister. It's going to be, what will it cost me? On Thursday, we're going to have Mr. Zach Decker on making the first move. And then on Friday, we're going to have our mentor, mentees in here, and they're going to be recapping for the week and talking about lessons learned. So again, I just want y'all to get ready. We got a dynamic week this week. And yeah, I hope you're sharing. I'm giving you time to share. Shoot that, shoot that link over there. That's www.MarylandDeniseCoachingServices.com. If you can't remember, look in your chat because I know that my, my partner, she's already got it ready for you to do what you need to do. And with that said, Miss Nene, how you doing this morning? I'm coming out from you. I am doing awesome this morning. Yes, ma'am. I'm doing awesome. Feeling great. And I uh, just want to say happy Monday to everybody and welcome into the room this morning and hope everyone is doing well and continue to share and come in with us this morning. Yes, 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 continue to share. Because, you know, I, I was thinking about the changing of the lanes and this weekend I did a, was starting with Thursday, I was doing a lot of changes, a lot of changes going on in my life. And uh, good changes, I'm grateful to God for that, is good changes uh, stretching me a little bit, stretching me really a whole lot. And with our lesson last week, it, it let me understand that I have to do that. I remember when Miss Kathy was talking about the truck, you can't stay behind that 18 wheeler. You got to change lanes so you can move a little bit further in life. And I thought about that, you know, I, I do, I have to move a little bit further, but there's also some necessary adjustments that I have to take. So I am so grateful for this, this class, this book, because we went from people's factor to changing lanes and stuff like that. And it's just, for me, it's helping me grow. 
that is definitely helping me grow. How, what do you think about that? Yes, ma'am, Andy, I can definitely say that it is doing the same this way as well in my life um, with the whole changing of lanes and everything and how to uh, maneuver, you know, yeah. properly. Like on the highway, you know, we got to put on our blinker, check the mirrors, and then some of us you know, try to look back what I had to, you know, make sure the coast is clear, we get over. But um, that's the same as in my life. I'm like, okay. But then I got to be careful when I look back. I don't want to look back right. too long. I just want to look back just to make sure, you know, and right. go on. But um, it's been really awesome. Yes, ma'am. The changing of lanes. Mm -hmm. And it just adds your, uh, my mind thinking on a whole nother uh, level and everything. Like I stated, I think one day last week, I uh, this room maybe feel like I can go and climb the Empire State Building, and it does. Like for real, <laughs> when I walk into work, people like, "What are you on now?" I'm on a big old cup of Jesus, a big old dose of Jesus. It's more in life. So, but yes, it was really uh, good, and I'm thankful for it all. Yeah, me too. Um, when you say that, that's what I I started a a, a class this this week, well, last week, and that's what it did for me, helped me to just go in there with confidence that, okay, I can do this. I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me, and I got some sisters that they they praying for me. They, they don't know what I yeah. need, but God know what I need, and I went in there, and I was like, yeah, I can do this, and I my first week was really good. I start again today, and I'm, I'm just excited. I am excited. I believe that I can do this because I'm going to learn how to do the necessary adjustments in Jesus. In Jesus. That, that, that's the key right there. That I got my foundation, and I'm going to learn how to grow on that this week. I'm excited about what Ms. Merlin and the other, Ms. Ms. Merlin going to bring today and all the other speakers that's coming in this week. I'm excited about that. I am. I am excited. Do you have a scripture for us today? Yes, ma'am, I do. I do. Uh... The scripture that I have is uh, Psalms 118 and 24. I think we all know this. You know, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And what I do is, like I said, I put Nene where it says we. Nene will rejoice and be glad in it. Because th throughout the day, I say it. Remind myself, no matter what comes, Nene going to rejoice and be glad in it. Because the Lord made this day, not the bank account, not the bills, not the kids, not yeah. the family, not the friends. The day the Lord has made. The Lord yeah. made this day. So Nene going to rejoice and be glad in it. And uh, that's something that I've been doing. And on Thursday, uh, it was like everything was just going crazy on Thursday. Um, so I had to constantly say it. The kids were acting. I got a phone call from school. The kids, one of the boys acting up in school. And then um, had another incident. And I'm like, I'm trying to do all of it, handle it all at one time. And I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to put the phone down. I'm going to walk away. I'm going to just, you know, go get a, a, go for a walk or something and just breathe. Because I'm like, no, y'all. I'm not letting anything stop this. This joy that I have, y'all didn't give it to me. I can't take it away. Just, you know, just start reminding myself of things like that, the scripture, what the word says and everything. Um, and it, it was, like I said, it was a real hectic Thursday, but through God's grace and through just my mindset change, a shift in my mindset on my own, it, not on my own, but through God. The day, the evening went smooth, you know, I, so Dylan, which is the youngest son, you know Dylan, he's yeah, I know. So, so he had an incident with the teacher. Him and the teacher was butting heads. And I'm like, come on, both to both of them. Like, y'all only have a week of school left, you know, and everything. And I was talking to the teacher, and the teacher said, you know what, well, you're right. I'm gonna end the school, you know, on a positive note. We're gonna end it on a positive note. So and the best thing for both of us to do, what all of us to do is just take responsibility for our actions, own up to our responsibility for our actions and everything. And you know, he was real apologetic and everything. You don't have to apologize to me for calling me and telling me about my kid. I know my kid. So, yeah. yeah. But um, anyway, I'm just talking to old 80. Did you have a scripture you would like to share? 
You know, I was thinking about Romans, as you were saying in Romans 12 and 1, I beseech thee therefore, brethren, by the mercy of God, that you present your body a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you can prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You were doing that. And that, that's, that's that a necessary adjustment that we have to make, you know, as we get through, you know, we got to remember that this day is the Lord's day. We have to rejoice in that. That's, that's that mindset. When you change your lane from that bad lane to that good lane, sometimes it might be the fast lane, sometimes it might be the slow lane, but whatever lane that you need to change in, you make that necessary adjustment. And I am, you know, I realize that this has to go in every single situation of our life. That has to be it. Be sure to make sure that you meet your lines, ladies. Good morning as you come in. I thank you for that. And, as, and, and when we get, when we make sure that we present our bodies as a reasonable, just reasonable, what, whatever's reasonable to you, you know what God has done for you. You know how much he has loved you. You know what he has, how many ways he's made for you. You understand that. So, Therefore, when you do that, that's your necessary adjustment. And I, I mean, you have to weigh it out. And I, I don't even want to get into it that, that deep because I know Miss Marilyn got some good stuff for us. So before I go any further, let's, let's just saturate this room with prayer. Our minds clear and eyes closed. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, Father, from all that is evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we thank you this morning for touching us, Lord God, and allowing us to see a day that was not promised to anyone, Father God. You kept us all through the night, Lord God. You kept our loved ones through the night. And Lord, we just want to say thank you, Lord. We exalt you, Father God. We realize that this is the day that you have made. And we have made up our minds that we will rejoice and be glad in it, Father God. We bind up anything that's in us or around us that will hinder us from celebrating you today, Lord God. But we know, Lord God, that you are life. You gave us new life this morning, brand new mercies. And we thank you for that, Father God. We lift, I lift up everyone under the sound of my weak voice, Lord those that are on the line, those that may be joining us by YouTube, those that may be joining us through the replay. I lift each and every one of them up, Father God. For I know, Lord God, that we are many members but one body, Father, and we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for taking care of our situations, Lord God. We thank you for adjusting our mindset, Father God. We thank you, Lord God. And then we thank you for Miss Marilyn, Father God. We ask you to keep our leader, Lord God. Bless her in the city. Bless her out of the city. Bless her comings and going. Speak to her the way you speak to her, Father. Continue to do that so that she may impart your will and your, excuse me, and your in, instructions to us, Father God. I ask you, Father God, to give us ears to hear, minds to be adjusted. I thank you for everything that you're doing, Lord God. And I ask you to just bless the other leaders that are gonna come in, Lord God. Strengthen them where they're weak and build them up where they're torn down, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you for this space. We thank you for this place. We thank you for this time right now, Father God. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. We thank you for our families, Father God. We even thank you, Lord God, that we have compassion for others, Father God. Those that may want to be on the line and cannot, Father God, I ask you to strengthen them, Father God. Those that don't even need, that think they don't need this space, Lord, adjust their minds, Father God. We thank you right now, Father God, for the people that are coming in. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, because we realize, Lord God, this is special, Lord. And we don't take nothing for granted, Father God. We give you all the praise and the glory and the honor. And most of all, Father, we thank you for Jesus. We thank you for Jesus, who died for our sins, Father God. 
so that we could have the right to even be where we are right now. We thank you for that. And we ask you, Lord God, to help us to tap into the Holy Spirit that you have given each and every one of us so we'll have a better understanding. We give you all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. This is your humble servant's prayer. I pray in the mighty, awesome name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Again, I want to say welcome to those that may have just came in. You have joined in to the Breakfast of Champions, hosted by Merlin Denise Coaching Service. Get ready, get ready, get your pens, get your paper. And you know, yeah, if, yeah. You, if you want to join, if you're looking at us on YouTube, I'm going to tell you again, you need to get on the line, www.MerlinDeniseCoachingServices, so that you can get in live and get the real good deal, get the whole full meal. And I just want to say thank you for coming. Thank you for those newbies that are coming in. Thank you, ladies, for sharing. And the ones that just came in on the line that are new, we welcome you. We appreciate your attention. And we know that you're finna get an experience of a lifetime. So with that said, I want to give it back to my co-host, Miss. Miss Nini, Miss Nini, Dynamic Nini, our praise and worship leader, and our uh, psalmist and our poetry leader. You're all of that, and we, I appreciate you. Thank you so much, Andy. Thank you so much. Um, I just want to briefly just do like a recap of last week of the changing of lanes, and mm -hmm. you know, we're disconnecting to reconnect. So on Monday, we did the creative margins with Miss Marilyn, and then Tuesday, evaluating your thinking with Mr. Harley. Wednesday, collaboration. Thursday, make the first move. And then Friday, raising the bar. Um, something that stood out to me on Tuesday was when Mr. Harley gave the focus, you know, follow one course until successful. You know, and that's like in life, we, you know, try to do like five things at one time. And it's like, okay, maybe I do need to just follow this one. God give me strength, just follow this one and see this one thing through. And then if I could see this one thing, thing through to the end, I know I can do the next thing through to the end. So it was um, a real good week, like I said, last week as well. And then with the necessary adjustments, I want to just bring that up just a a little testimony about that back in 2017 of September, I'm working, you know, everything and kids doing their thing. And everything. So I'm like, oh my gosh, it just seemed like everything was kind of coming together and going crazy. The bank account laughing at me, you know, bills just coming and kids <laughs> being kids, doing kids stuff. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, I am just, I started confessing it. I'm tired. I'm like, oh man, I'm tired. I'm tired. Call mama. Oh man, I'm running the list down the hub about everything. Oh, I'm just tired. I'm tired. And I go to the doctor, do the same thing at the doctor. Oh, you know, doc. and she, I'm like, wait a minute, what does blood work have to do with what I'm telling you, lady? Give me some, you know, some advice. Give me some medicine, some something. Help me. <laughs> so uh, she ordered blood work. I'm like, okay, I guess go do the blood work. Then the next day, I'm at work and get a phone call from the doctor's office. Okay, we need you to go whenever you can to the hospital and do a blood transfusion. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so then I get there to the hospital. I'm like, okay, well, let me just leave work, go over to the hospital, do this because I need to be done by 3.30 to go get these kids. <laughs> that... <laughs> didn't go the way I thought ended up a whole week wow. in the hospital with transfusions not just blood but iron and I'm like okay so really to me it was like okay you said you're tired you kept saying you was tired you tired so I'm gonna give you some rest then give you an opportunity to sit your butt down and rest then I'm gonna put you in here for a whole week get your mind right you know what I'm saying? Wow. <laughs> Get your mind right. Then not only that, I had to make some necessary adjustments, not just in my diet, what I ate, but then in my diet as well as what I spoke and what I took in. You know, I had to do that as well. So it was like 
okay it was just like a whole new just a reset for me you know you walk around you saying that you're tired eventually you're gonna be tired you're gonna start yawning and everything and you're gonna or you're just gonna be sluggish and stuff so it was like i said a necessary adjustment in life for me with the whole menu change from uh salt from everything from eating better and everything because remember I, back in 2015 i had this oh, then i stepped back in 2017 with some uh, bad yeah. habits of eating and stuff so um for me that was like a whole adjustment i had to start looking at life differently quit saying certain things and then quit watching certain things and then at that time i'm like okay i'm calling people but no one is really responding. I'm like, I felt like I was just alone. Then I had a phone. I was like, this oh, my old phone had a little app on. It was Quick Memo, and I would always jot stuff down in this the app. You know, I didn't always have my pen and paper, so I'm just jotting stuff down. And so I went back to a prayer I put in, in the app one day, and I was like, wow. And it was just like asking him to you know this decrease my circle yeah if my circle is corrupt decrease my and that's what he was doing he was doing what i asked and was pointing out like wow this all making sense now why everybody was you know there like they were supposed to be and asked him because he was it was the answer to prayer and i was like okay and sometimes that's what i you know be like okay when something happens if it's a no from him, it's like this really an answered prayer. A no, this is an answered prayer. Yeah. And I'm taking the no's and seeing the no's differently because it's not just a no, you can't do it. It's just a no that's not good for you, that's not right for you. So I'm going to be the daddy that you want me to be, the father that you need me to be. And I'm going to give you this no. And then not only give you this, sometimes he got to chastise me. So, you know, it give me back on the right course so mm -hmm. but yes that was i was like wow when that happened I, man i've been playing my whole day out what you mean <laughs> y'all waiting on my room and i'm <laughs> now we gotta go so, it was yeah it was real, a real eye opener for me then mm -hmm. so Yes, I'm glad to see that you are doing well, though. Your necessary adjustment did happen. And you know what? I am just grateful to God that you are doing better. I'm, I'm going to chastise you a little later about some other stuff since we didn't know about it. Yeah. You know, because you, one thing, and I can't, I mean, I'm guilty of it too. I go, go through stuff and don't tell anyone. And so, yeah. Don't tell the right people. Yes, ma'am. But we're going to move on with that. And I'm, like I said, I am grateful that God ministered to you. Because sometimes that's what we need and when we're making our necessary adjustments. Mm -hmm. Just what is it? I mean, I'm a little mature in, in, this, in these songs sometimes. But it's just a little talk with Jesus. You know, every day will be all right. <laughs> you know? And sometimes we just got to have that little talk with Jesus. Oh, we got to just call yes. him up and tell him what we need, you know. He already know, and that's the good part. He already know, but he want us to make sure that we communicate with him. You know, once we communicate with him, he knows that now we got our mind stayed on him, not trying to fix it ourselves, but we, we let him know, hey, look, I can't do this. I need you to help me to move, you know, and, and again, everything that we have learned this month has come back to the point that we have, you know, just, well, even last month when we, we learned about the people factor, how to deal with people, then as we <laughs> go on and do what we need to do, we make the necessary adjustments. I am so excited about this. I really, really am. I'm excited that, you know, first of all, like I said earlier, this is my one, this, this Monday here is my one year in this room. And I, and, and it just blows my mind how quickly it went. And I, I remember when I first came in here, I was like, I don't know about all this here. I don't know what you need to put me into, you know? And, and 
as God anointed our leader, Miss Marilyn, into the word she was saying. It wasn't, it wasn't her. It was God using her. And I'm mm -hmm. grateful that she allows God to use her in the way that she, he does because, you know, everybody needs a different kind of medicine. Everybody needs, you know, it may be the same medicine, but it's, it is issued to you a different way. Like, you know, when I was little and we didn't have all these other different shots and stuff, well, you know, and my mom, oh, in the wintertime, she would give us what they call a uh, Jennifer talk. And it was some little black stuff. And she put it on, it was, some, she put a little sugar on the end of the spoon, right? And then she put a couple of little drops in there and we took it. Yeah, the sugar didn't really do that much, much good, but I didn't have to worry about no colds and no sniffles and mm -hmm. none of that. Then when the springtime came, they did some stuff called suffer and molasses. That was the nastiest mm -hmm. stuff. But she would put it on there and she was put it down our throat and it made us good. But my grandmother, when my grandmother, uh, you know, would do it, I don't know what she mixed in with that stuff, with that, that stuff and molasses, but it was something else that I, I don't know what it was I, to this day. But when she gave it to us, and maybe just her sweet voice or whatever, it went down a little bit easier. It went down a little bit easier, but it still had the same results. And I say that to say that I know that some people may think Miss Merlin is this or that. I know she is the right antidote for this room. And God yeah. has anointed her to, to, to explain things and, and present it to us where we see Jesus. And I thank God for that. I thank God for her. I thank God for being in this room. And again, I hope y'all still sharing. If y'all forgot to share those that just came in, make sure you share this link because it is something that we all need, you know, and those that they'll come in sooner or later at the right time. And I, I'm grateful to Miss Merlin for allowing her to let the Lord use her the way she does. And I'm grateful to be in this room. Miss Merlin. Are you with us right now? I know you're going to give us some good liabilities and assets <laughs> right now. I am ready. I am ready. Good well, why morning, don't we... Angel. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, why don't we take a minute to kind of let the ladies kind of share just a little bit. You know, maybe, um, you know, last week, I know we had a kind of a full week, you know, just talking about uh, changing lanes and you know, I don't know about y'all, but I think this weekend, you know, was, um, you, you know, how after you've heard the word of God and, you know, especially if you've been in the sanctuary or whatever, you step out of there and it's like, you know, I got to make the necessary adjustments of what's been shared, you know, mm -hmm. and then whole, all week long, you start seeing God working something out in your life. And it's like, Lord, you know, how did you go about doing that so quickly? That That's how I feel. Uh, this weekend, that's what I feel like happened uh, this weekend. There was some necessary changes that need to be made. And as the Lord kept identifying them, I had to still give him a yes to his will, a yes to his way. Yes, God, I will obey. And all weekend long, God kept doing the same thing because in order for you to get to whatever that next phase that you need to get to, or just to just keep navigating through life, you know, you're going to have to, you're going to have to put into action, like Miss Cookie said, the people factor, you're going to have to put in, put into action, you know, where we are right now. So uh, let's take a moment to see if any of the other ladies have anything not to share necessarily about your weekend, but if there was some change, some things that you received from the word last week that helped you to kind of shift into some things over the weekend that you're ready to put into action for this week. So let's see if we can't hear from them first, and then I'll come into you guys in just a minute. Yes, ma'am. Right. Any, any ladies from the audience, if you guys would like to share, if you could just, if you could just raise your hand, we'll definitely get you in this morning. Anybody? All right. Everybody may be still asleep this morning, huh? All right. All right. Well, I'll go ahead and take it from here, Miss Cookie. Uh, first of all, I want to say thank you this morning, everyone, for 
you know, coming in and just blessing us with your presence on today. We, we thank you so much. Uh, it has been a awesome uh, opportunity uh, to join here with what we call the Breakfast of Champions, where we are coming in every Monday through Friday, just sharing uh, great nuggets that, you know, um, you know, that especially those of us that have been uh, called of God to uh, share during this particular season here. And, you know, as we are sharing and giving what God has given to us, you best believe that God is doing some things in our lives as well. And uh, this morning, we're going to be talking about those assets and those liabilities, you know, and uh, understanding what that's all about. But before we do that, I want to take a moment just to uh, say hello to everyone. And, uh, and I may bring somebody on stage with me. I don't know who it may be. Uh, I may bring somebody on stage with me. Uh, but first of all, um, we have, I think that may be Miss Tonette that's on the line. I want to say good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Nini, good morning. Thank you for that music. I, I was like, Miss Cookie, yeah, he has given us new life. That was a great way to uh, close the segment out this morning. Uh, Mrs. Delcina Mangum, want to say good morning to you. Uh, Mrs. Donisha Warren, good morning. Good morning, Miss Felicia Lee, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Nikki Prentice, good morning. Miss Kathy Mitchell, good morning. Mrs. Ladriva Coaston, good morning. Miss Latoya Hansen, good morning. Miss Therese McDowell, good morning. Miss Cookie Marie, good morning. Mrs. Regina Oliver, good morning. Uh, Mrs. Robin Boone, good morning. Mrs. Shannon McCray, good morning to you. Mrs. Chick Holm, good morning. Good morning. Uh, Mrs. Shirley Clark, good morning. Mrs. Tamia, good morning. And Mrs. Tanisha Bright, I want to say good morning to you as well. Um, and for all of you that may be joining me in via YouTube, I want to say good morning to y'all also. And whenever you get an opportunity, come on in and join us, join in the room. Uh, for those of you that are already a part of this group and you have not had an opportunity to be in the room in a long time, I know the school year has ended and uh, thank you, Ms. Regina. I know the school year has ended and maybe you guys were busy, you know, managing life with the children and, you know, different things like that. And this will be a great time to come on in just to kind of get you some nourishment, get you some food. I know you may not be able to stay in the room all the time, but, you know, whenever the opportunity presents itself, come on in and be a part of this great family, you know, of believers. That's the first thing. We are a family of believers and uh, we do stand upon the word of God. We allow the word of God to be what we call the final authority in our lives, you know, no matter what the world is saying, no matter what, you know, life may be throwing toward us, you know, we're going to stop and hear what the spirit has to say, because to be honest, there is no safety in anything except for the word of God. Amen. Uh, well, I want to take a minute also and thank the ladies for joining me on Friday. I was a rolling stone this weekend. Y'all, I traveled to Houston uh, on Thursday. On Friday, left Houston, went to Tyler to go visit with my brother, uh, called, kind of just, you know, text a few people, asked them if y'all wanted to join me for lunch, for dinner tonight. Uh, the ladies came out. We had a great time of fellowship uh, with everyone and then came back home. I uh, had an opportunity to be a part of a discussion panel uh, with relationships, and it was um it was a it, it was what I call changing lanes, you know, getting among uh, different people that are kind of in that sphere of influence where I'm at. Uh, got a chance to meet some cool brothers out there. I think it was probably about maybe about 20 of us that were at the round table and we got a chance to sh share our thoughts. There were people that were single, never married. Uh, there were people single, which but was coming from divorce. Uh, there was a gentleman that um, shared, uh, he had been married for like 37 years. His wife uh, uh, passed away suddenly, got a chance to share his testimony. There was a gentleman there that had been married for 47 years. Uh, there was a, uh, I got a chance to sit by a litigation lawyer uh, that was next to me. Uh, I got a chance to sit next to a brother that was uh, in the arena to where he uh, works with men, with building lives. So it was a great work, a uh, great week of networking, weekend of networking. And I was, I was so proud. Then I got a chance to go out and have dinner with one of my, uh, one of my girlfriends. I'm trying to stay connected in every way that I can. And then yesterday I had an opportunity to go out and visit with the kids for a little while. So it was a real well-rounded weekend. 
and uh, and then got a chance to go to the beauty shop for the first time, and I don't know when. <laughs> and listen, got to the beauty shop. I know it wasn't nothing but an ordained move of God, because I normally do my own hair, but I didn't feel like doing it. And got in there and met this wonderful, wonderful lady. Uh, she really made me think about this topic of discussion that we're having about assets and liabilities. You know, um, the way that, you know, uh, one, she wanted to take care of my hair. You know, uh, she was new to the city. She's here from Baton Rouge. And, you know, she said, oh, Miss Mary, I would love to be your beautician. You know, and y'all, the crazy thing was my two older beauticians are in the same shop. They're they're all over in the J.C. Penney's uh, salon. And uh, they just so they didn't all start out there. They all started out in private shops. Uh, my first one, she moved over there. She had been over there, um, you know, previously. And then my my the last beautician that I had, she was at a private shop, moved into that particular location. So they're all in that one place. And it was like, oh, my God, do I feel a, a sense of kind of betrayal? But I didn't because all of those ladies know me as a believer and they know that I share the word of God. So uh, the lady that was that would, that used to do it, she sat right next to her and she was listening to us talk and she just kept, kept giving me a thumbs up because we both are in ministry and understanding to me. That is the essence of learning where your liabilities and assets are. You know, because normally when you see things happen like that, people will start feeling a little some kind of way and not saying that she didn't at first, but I think later on she realized who it was that she was dealing with. And Marilyn is ministering all the time. This lady may just need her. And even after I shared with the young lady that this was my previous uh, beautician or she's, you know, been my beautician for a while, you know, she was good with it. She said, well, tell me what Mrs. You know, so-and-so used to do and all of that. And, you know, but she still said out loud, I want to be your beautician. I want to be the one that takes care of your hair. Y'all that make me feel so good uh, to know that people are confident in themselves. And when I heard her talking about the word of God, I said, that's where that comes from. She has a confidence of who she is in Christ. It's not about what anybody else is thinking. You know, this lady may not have been praying for, you know, me to be her, you know, uh, beautician or me to be her customer. But this lady had been praying for something. And sometimes you do have to take things by the helm just like that. And, you know, I always think about that scripture where he says that the kingdom suffered violence and we go back and we take it back by force. You know, maybe people are not in place where they need to be and you are in that position it's not like you're taking anything you know from anybody you just have to know what God has called you to do in life you know and uh, how many of you would have had a kind of a um I don't know some kind of feeling about worrying about what what somebody else may have thought about that or how somebody else may have felt and it would have made you go back maybe to yeah, I think I probably need to stick with them because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings. You know, how many of you would have felt like that? Let's just be open and honest this morning. How many of you would have felt that? I know sometimes we get stuck. You know, I know I do anyway. I care about people, you know, so much that sometimes I won't. Yeah, Regina said me. Sometimes I care so much about everybody else's feelings that I don't always go for what I need. You know, uh, I had been crying out for somebody to take care of my hair, you know, and, and when it happens and somebody comes in, you know, that may not have been somebody else's cry. Yeah, Nene said me. Yeah, we do. I think it's just as women, just as human beings, you know, we do care a lot about what other people think. And I don't think anything is wrong with that. Uh, thank you, uh, uh, Chick. I don't think anything is wrong with that. But remember, when we talked about in uh, the people factor, everything you do, it's got to be a win-win situation. It can't be, you know, like, you know, all one day, off another day. You know, I'm faithful to you, but you're not faithful to me. You know, I'm committed to the cause, but you're, you know, sometimes committed to it you know, little things like that. And I think in this particular season in my life, uh, I'm more committed to purpose, guys. I'm more committed to purpose. And it's not so much about um, what everybody else thinks. 
Um, I mean, that's a place of growing up. You know, you have to be committed to where you're going, you know, um, trying to stick with someone who didn't do my hair right and also nails right. Yeah, I've done that before, Regina, and came home was so frustrated, you know, and then said to myself, I wasn't going back again. And then got myself put into a crunch and what ended up happening, I went back again anyway, you know. And sometimes you have to make some decisions uh, about things. Uh, we're going to talk about that this morning when we, we, we discuss the um, assets and liabilities. Uh, but I want to give you guys just a moment uh, just to share this morning. Um, you know, um, anybody that would be willing to open up your line and kind of talk about, you know, how there may have been times in your life where you needed to make some adjustments, maybe take about two or three minutes, that you needed to make some adjustments in your life, but you really were connected to, you were so connected to maybe uh, loyalty or you were connected to, you know, you know, they were good to me, and but it wasn't helping you. And then you found yourself stuck for a long time, or maybe there was something that you needed, you needed to have a conversation about something but you were just not strong enough to have that conversation. So you just let, you know, um, things continue to get out of order. And then you end up having to suffer a long time for that and really did not, you know, you know, take it for what it was. Miss Regina, yes, ma'am. Good morning, Miss Marilyn. Good, Good morning. morning. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, you do look beautiful. I love your hair. Um, yeah, that's kind of like the, the kind of the thing that I'm going through right now with the, something in my personal life, you know, where you just try to try to make excuses, just trying to see the bright side of, of, of a person or a situation. And then they just keep, it just keeps coming back to you. You know, the Lord just keeps giving you different reasons as to why you need to make certain steps, you know, to, for the betterment of some, you know, of, of someone. Um, I'm just, I'm, I'm dealing with that right now. You know, the more I just try and try and try to see, see the good in this person and give them chance after chance, after chance, after chance to do right. They always show me their true side. You know, they always show me that it's not that they really care about that. They care about me. Well, it's, it showed me that they don't care about me at all just by, you know, by little things as, as, as much as like, if you're supposed to be somewhere, you, you, you never show up on time or else you don't come. When you're supposed to do certain things, you never follow through, but yet and still, anytime you call on Regina, I'm, I mean, before you can even get the, you know, get it out of your mouth, I'm there. I'm, I'm, I'm coming, I'm doing, I'm providing. And it's just, it's, it's hard and it's, I'm, I'm, I'm going to have to change some lanes, you know, I'm going to have to start thinking about what's best for the person that's involved in all of this situation. And as, as hard as it is, I'm going to have to make some hard decisions. And like I've made hard decisions because I've tried to, to work with this person, you know, to make sure, you know, just because I don't want to be that person to, to take away I don't want to you know, go into de to details, but you know, to take away um, from the situation. But I mean, it's it's gotten to where it's getting to where that's you know that's that's going to be my next step. You know, so I totally, I totally, um, and with what you know you're, you're talking about this week, and I, I know it's the Lord. You know, it's just that's more confirmation of what I what I what I'm going to have to do, you know, in this in the near future. It's just it's just it's it's confirmation. I mean, I didn't sleep well last night, I kind of tossed and turned about. It. It's been weighing on my heart, you know, you know, as of late, really as, you know, the last 4 or 5 months. You know, things just not getting any better. And so you especially when you see a person will step up and and do a little bit better for somebody else they don't even know. And then here you are breaking your back for them and you can't even get them to do little simple stuff. You know, it just shows, it showed me where, where their loyalty is, that they don't have any, you know, not to me, not to the one that, you know, that's constantly trying to help them out, you know, that's constantly always there for them. So, you know, this is, this is really hitting home and resonating with me. So I want to, I want to thank you so much. 
Amen, Regina. And thank you for your transparency with that, uh, because I can I can feel that in your heart that uh, you've been tossing that around for a little while and, you know, trying to figure it out. And believe it or not, it, it's a lot of people in that particular space right there. They're trying to, you know, weigh, you know, the good, uh, trying to, you know, not be extra. You know, that's what we say, being extra with things. But the reality is, I believe when the Lord is revealing something to us, um, he knows that we're having to push back a lot of layers, you know, um, you know, not wanting the others to feel like they've been slighted or anything like that. But I think sometimes you do have to go back to um, realize that you are in a growing season in your life and something has to change. Anytime that you're in a position to where you know, you have seen the same things over and over again. And listen, ladies, uh, you have to jump in while the waters are troubled, you know, you know, because, you know, sometimes there is a holy anger that can come up with us about something. Um, and it's for us to pay attention to it. It's not always to act out on it at that particular time, but to bring an awareness to it. And then remember what I said before you make any decisions about anything, Always take it before God. See, because God has to go in and sift through all the emotions, all the feelings, and then God's got to make crooked places straight. And then he opens up a window of opportunity for you. And you'll wonder, oh my God, that was easier than I thought. No, it was that you needed to wait on God. Because see, when when, when, it's, when it's a real God move, uh, God brings two hearts together, you know, at one time so that we can have those open dialogues and those open conversations without all of the emotions in the middle of the sea, because it's the emotions that get us all into saying things that we probably shouldn't be saying or, you know, things that we've been wanting to say for a long time. No, let's just hit the matter of the fact that, you know, this is a timing uh, that, you know, you are, you know, maybe uh, doing something different in your life, and you don't have to explain all those things to everybody. You know, I think Bishop Jakes was talking about it yesterday. He talked about you need to pivot during this season in your life. And when you're pivoting, you do not have to explain your pivot to everyone else because all of us are on a different journey and we're all trying to make sure to get to the destination that we need to get to. Uh, amen. Well, good. Thank you, Regina. I see some other comments that are coming in the chat box. Uh, Mrs. Tangela said, uh, she says she's been there many times. You know, I had to remind myself. I like that, Tangela. She said obedience is better than sacrifice. Yeah, I, I believe that. Um, there are often times that God will teach us the word of God, too. You know, sometimes you'll hear scriptures, but you don't always understand the scriptures. And then there are often times where God has to put you in the real life of it. And he's saying, this is what that scripture means. And can you imagine now, let me go back and read the scripture and what, what was going on, you know, with the children of Israel, where the Lord was telling them that it was better for you to obey God than to deal with the sacrifice. You got to remember that they were always into something, you know, um, uh, God would tell them to, you know, uh, make a move here. And, you know, because of the hearts of the people or, and we didn't have nobody to put us in the water or, you know, it was, yo, it was the people, God, we were always blaming someone else. And the Lord is saying that, no, this thing is about you and you have to make every, every effort that you have to make. So the obedience, when you hear my voice, when you hear me saying something to you, it's that, it's that little girl that got to get out of you. And you got to bring the adult into the, into the, you know, into the equation so that we can talk like men. And let's deal with this thing head on. So a lot of times we have to go back and think about what is it that God is trying to uh, bring about an awareness with us. And sometimes that doesn't always feel good because we wasn't ready to wake up. You know, we wasn't ready to grow up, God. It wasn't me. It was them. Anytime you still putting blame on other people, it's still a lesson that's got to be learned in it. So he said obedience is always going to be better than sacrifice. Um, Tangel also said, uh, yes, ma'am, Miss Regina, those transactional relation, re relationships, the more dedicated people always end up exhausted. Oh, that's a good one there. Check your exhaust level. Um, yes, I love that. I'm trying to get down to more comments. Uh, anybody else want to share anything on that? Anybody else want to share? It's going to be a great conversation this week. I hope you guys will tune in each and every day. Every 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 little turn 
is going to open up something else in you. It's going to bring about an awareness. And then it's when we put them seeds on the ground at the end of the week, it's like, you know what, God, let's seal this thing all up and let's 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 let you do the work because we already know we can't do it. If we could, we could have done it already on our own. Anybody else this morning before I start this session? Miss Tangela, yes, ma'am. Uh, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to uh, say this um, concerning the conversation. Um, I think, you know, in the midst of learning who we are uh, when it comes to, you know, being in relationships with different people. And um, I think about you sometimes too, uh, Miss Marilyn, because uh, you're so gifted in different areas. Um, I've ran across so many gifted people it's a gift from God. And I think sometimes they look at other people as um, they might feel like they're not getting something from, uh, from another person, but all along, you're just extraordinary. You're just gifted in the area. I have a sister. She, she catch up, she catches on to stuff just like that. Just like that. Look, meanwhile, we're in the conversation and we're still trying to grasp what's going on. <laughs> You know, all these in your windows, we're trying to grasp what's going on. But she picked up, even when she was younger, like in the second grade, she could just read so fast. She was just extraordinary. Her son's like that, too. And so I would always uh, tell her, and she said, okay, yeah, Tangela, I recognize the gift. I recognize the gift. I said, because you could be in the midst of somebody that's ab above average, yeah. above average, but because you're so gifted, everybody else in the room, they feeling like, you know, like, well, okay, are we, you know, they trying to figure out, am I really intelligent? Am I this or that? Well, yeah, you are, but you have this one person in the room that's just really gifted. And so mm -hmm. I'm saying that to say, you know, y'all, let's check our gifts because sometimes we could be gifted in the area, like my giving, my um, ability to um, anticipate others' needs, that, that is, I, I have a gift in that. And I have to check myself because when I feel like I'm not getting the same thing from somebody, yeah. I start feeling some type of way. And it's like, now, nah, Tan, you're just gifted in that area. There's there's something there that's a little bit extra. And so you might be above average in something, guys. And you might, you know, feel like, well, why am I not getting this back? And I don't know what area it could be. But y'all, just check y'all gifts because it, it, it could be something there like that. And then when you're compared to what somebody else is doing for you or to you, it might seem like it's not fair. You're not getting what you need. And God is just, he just spoke to me about a situation just with me talking to y'all. So I just wanted to say that because we're, we're all in here. We're all leaders. We're all extraordinary, we're all peculiar. Yes. And we all have so many gifts. So just remember that when you're dealing with somebody and some people just don't have it to give, you know, even in on their best day, they, some people want to be X, Y, Z, and they just don't even have to give. So they got us, you know, start at the bottom and scratch, go to the drawing board, you know, and see, cause they just wasn't raised around it. They don't, they don't even know what you're talking about. And so they're having to the people that really, really want to, to be better in certain areas, they're going back to the drawing board and they're just a little slower at, at comprehending and understanding but, uh, you know, just let's just show people grace there. And I'm talking to myself because I've had to I've had to recognize that because um, I'm not one to throw anybody away. But, you know, I, I really started to feel bad about myself because I'm like, well, why am I doing all this? And nobody else is acting like they even care. But it wasn't necessarily that all the time. It was that sometime now, but it wasn't necessarily that all the time. So, yeah, let's just check our gifts and kind of see what's really going on there. Yeah, that, that's a good way to put that, Tangela, because that, that's, that's that, that paper analysis that I use a lot of times. You know, you see the paper on the floor, but nobody else sees the paper. You keep wondering, why can't they just, you know, just get it? They're not gifted in that area. They're not keen in that area. They don't have the discernment. And then also remember that there are gifts that God gives us in the spirit. You know, there's a gift of discernment uh, to where the Lord will show you a lot of different things. And you can't expect everybody else to see it. And to be honest, Angela, I get caught up in that sometimes because I don't see myself as gifted all the time. You know, I see myself as just a willing vessel, uh, willing to be used by God. But I, I, it, it sometimes has to come back to me, Marilyn, that's your gift operating. That's not you operating. That's your gift operating. And once I realize that, 
I think I give people a little bit more grace. Uh, there, there are some times that we are um, ahead of the game uh, with a lot because uh, ladies, you got to know that as you are spending time in this room, you know, with Breakfast of Champions, you are making a sacrifice every morning to get up uh, to, you know, get into the presence of God and, you know, to catch all of the little foxes that may be trying to climb up your vine, the vine of your mind, those strings of your heart, you know, coming in to pull away from your assets, all of those kinds of things, you know, and then what happens is, is you are giving your 10%, the Lord is coming in and making intercession for you, you know, uh, that's that stuff in the middle of the night is making, making intercession with moanings and groans that cannot be uttered. That's why I say a lot of times, everything you don't have to speak up about, you don't have to say anything about it. Just know that your gift will make room for you and it will give you instructions on how to go about handling things. Because a lot of people, you, you may think that this should be something common to them, but it is not something that's common to them. So I'm like Tangela, know where you're gifted. Know that sometimes it is your gift you know, that's operating and give people a little bit more grace. Amen. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Tangela. Uh, yeah, I, I did. I do realize that that I do have a coat of many colors. Uh, not quite sure why God gave that to me like he did, you know, but um, I, I, I'm, I'm learning to, um, you know, make sure to uh, use that gift um, in, in a responsible way. Because when you're gifted in a lot of different ways, you know, um, uh, people see that, well, well, give Ms. Marilyn to do. Give Ms. Marilyn to do. Give Ms. Marilyn to do it. And I used to be of the opinion, move out of the way. You don't want to do it, I'll go ahead and do it. But now I'm of the opinion, no, show them how to do it. Because that's not good for you to want everybody to do everything for you, you know. And it's, you're, you're going to be a liability to, a liability to me eventually. And eventually you're going to um, uh, uh, um, bankrupt the relationship and that's not going to be good. And you ought to take care of the relationships that's coming into your life to make sure that there is no bankrupting that's taking place, especially those that you care about a lot. Amen. Uh, I'll take one more and then we'll get started uh, with the session this morning. And thank you all for the open comments this morning. I appreciate it. Good morning. Good morning. Yes. Good morning, Felicia. Good morning. I definitely wanted to um, say I definitely agree with what Ms. Tangela uh, was saying as well. Uh, we do have to know the heart and the mindset of how we how we operate. We do have to be familiar when we're gifted in anything, hospitality, uh, being conscientious of things, asking people, are you okay? You know, a lot of times it's your natural flow, but you're right, it's a gift. and it has to be managed and it has to be stewarded and it has to be understood, um, especially in the places you abide in on a regular basis, you know? Um, and when, and, and the different settings that you're in. So if I'm in a secular setting, I need to understand my gift in secular. I need to understand my gift in the kingdom. I need to understand my gift at home because if I don't, then I'm going to be, my expectations going to be off. My, my scales are going to be off. And then what happens is the enemy is able to bait you into a conversation that should never even take place. So it really is not even about them. It's, it's not about them. It's about us. So I have to take what's going on to God and let God reset and, sh and show me how I need to see a thing. Perspective is everything. And if I'm coming from the wrong perspective, my flesh is going to start talking, keep talking. Next thing you know, you in heaven is in depression. That devil is a lie. Mm -mm. I'm not going there. I'm going to go into praise. And I'm going to thank, especially when you hurt. The best thing to do is go into praise. The best thing to do is go into adoration of God because it starts shifting that conversation to um, where God can begin to flow that, that, the answers and the peace you need. And so that peace is, is definitely um, your portion and I'm gonna get it back. Like, okay, uh, you know, cause sometimes we do, we overspill. We, we, 
we begin to do too much, you know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. um, it, it's about me being faithful to God, not to man. And so everything had to be put back in check. Like I need to get my, my belt back on situated correctly. And so, yeah. And then sometimes it's a conversation that we never God, like when you go from faith to faith to glory, glory, it's like that conversation renews. And so God in his, um, his cultivation over us, it's like, okay, like Dr. Marilyn was saying, okay, now we need to come from this level, this stage, adolescence, childhood, whatever, um, that, that part of how we see it is too immature. It was okay when, then, back then, but now it's a new conversation. So we have to take it back to God. We have to resubmit things to God and say, God, okay, show me where I'm in error. Show me how I have to see this. Where am I in ignorance? Where am I uh, even idolizing? You know, you can, you can walk into idolatry with certain things because you're doing too much. And God's like, balance that, check that, you know, and make sure you're serving me and not man and understand the man that you are serving understand the man or the woman of the child understand them too so it's like understanding your environment so yeah that's good that's good and and you guys are getting the gist of what this conversation is going to be about you know because you do it, it it's a it's an awareness that has to be taken y'all we got to move out of our emotions and out of what it feel like to me and what somebody else did and you know, you can get caught up in a world and a, a, a kind of a whirlwind of emotions too much. And and you'll never be able to come out of that. You can't make good decisions when you're very emotional, especially not God decisions when you're overly emotional. And uh, and you have to, you know, begin to start thinking about it. I, I've, I've been thinking about how, um, you know, we're joining um, many of you together to co-partner in the room uh, with each other. And one of the reasons for that is that we step outside of ourselves, you know, because sometimes um, that's the only voice that we've been hearing is our own voice. And every now and then you need to be able to sit down at the table with other, other individuals, you know, to have um, uh, open dialogue uh, and discussion with people that are like-minded so that you can hear from a, a different perspective. Otherwise, this is what I call a liability that will take place in your life. You know, a liability is always going to be something that's going to cost you later on. You know, just listening to your own opinion all the time is going to cost you. Listening to everybody else's opinion is going to cost you somewhere. Uh, not, not knowing how to apply the word of God to your particular situation, what you're going through, is going to cost you something. I think the, the the Bible talked about it when uh, they were taking the Lord's Supper. And, um, you know, he talked about not taking the Lord's su Supper unworthily, you know, and then also, you know, understanding that this is a, a, um, a personal thing that we're doing. You know, you need to go check yourself to make sure, you know, you don't have out with your brothers or you don't have, you know, uh, all these disagreements and you come into the Lord's Supper and, you know, you're, you know, got all these acts of service going on, but you forgot to go over and say, you know, forgive me to such and such. I think as a beautician yesterday was that was talking. Um, yeah, she, I don't think she know who she is. I don't think she knew. I, I don't she doesn't really think that she's just a believer, but that stuff she was spitting out yesterday. I'm like, girl, you making me think about life. Uh, she talked about a situation uh, to where family had come together and her thing is all in with family. There's no, you know, what they did to me and all that kind of stuff. We're all in with this. And she said there was a family member that had come out of town. And when they came way from out of town to visit, it was a, uh, somebody had passed away or whatever. They bypassed some of the cousins and didn't even speak to the cousins. And she said, are you not going to speak to such and such? And she said, and the lady tried to ignore and she said, she asked her again, are you not going to speak to them? And she's a girl, no. And she's like, and then went back to mourning and crying. And she said, it ought not be like that. How in the world could you be over here having all this, this, this act of service that you got going on, but you can't go back and speak to your family? And see, that's that thing not taking the Lord's Supper unworthily, you know, not you know, not judging anything before time, 
Because believe it or not, sometimes, you know, when, when, when death happens, it is a reuniting of families coming together to give you an opportunity to get things right. And how many times do, there are a lot of times we get it right and there's a lot of times we miss it because we still have that place called pride that's within us that we do not want to admit, you know, that one, that there is a, there is a, um, a, a issue from both parts, not just one, and you have to sit down and talk about those things because it could be the way we saw it. It could have been a lot of other things that were going on in the middle of it, you know, and you have to sit down and have some adult conversations, y'all. You can't just, you know, they knew what they were doing. That that burns me up when I hear people saying that. That's a cop out when you say, oh, they knew what they were doing. You know, well, if they knew what they were doing and you knew they were doing wrong, why did you not have a conversation with them about what was going on? Why would you just subscribe to they knew what they were doing? So if they knew what they were doing and they did this to you, why didn't you go back to correct the situation since you say they knew what they were doing and they did that to you? So you just going to keep letting it go on and let them go do it to somebody else. See, we got to move away from them cop outs like that. Yeah. You're saying that because you still want to put fault on them about whatever. But what 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 part were you supposed supposed to play with that is the question that's being asked. Uh, Ms. Regina said, yes, how can you say you love God when you don't even love your brother and sister that you see every day? Yeah, everything's going to lead us always back to the word of God. Amen. Well, let's kind of go in uh, this morning talking about the uh, liabilities and assets. And uh, it's going to be a great conversation all week long. I think I saw something that Tangela put up there as well, uh, where she said that it could be even with your spouses. Um, uh, I think I saw something and you have to give them grace. I think that's something that I saw that was there. I don't know, I can't find it now. But when you're talking about uh, liabilities, um, a liability is always gonna be something uh, that's going to be, um, you know, something that will take away from you or um, it's gonna be, you're definitely something that's been added on. I'm taking on a liability or I'm taking on um, maybe another project, another assignment. And there, there's a key something that I want you guys to remember that anytime you add something on, you need to take something off, okay? See, because liability is, liabilities are when we're taking on, say for instance, you bringing new people into your life, okay? Uh, that's gonna be, that's gonna cost you something. And it's not always something bad. It's gonna, it's gonna cost you something. You know, when you purchase a new car, that's a liability, okay? It's going to cost you something. You know, when you get a new place to stay, that, that's, a, that's a liability that's there. You know, it's going to cost you something. But you have to go back and think about what is it going to cost me? Because that means in order for it not to be something that, that, that takes away in a negative way, because I don't think liabilities have to all be bad, but I do believe that when you add something onto your life, you got to be able to take something off. So if I'm going to add, you know, say, for instance, I got a new job, you know, what type of job is it? Or, you know, um, you know, is this, this that the what I got to add to it? I may have to get up early in the morning time. So I got to take off sleeping late. OK, that that's something that's been added to my life. OK, it's a liability that there's something that I brought on with me. I need this thing to turn into an asset in my life. Everything that you bring into your space needs to turn into an asset. Okay, I see it now, Tangela. It needs to turn into an asset. So if I'm if I'm um, bringing a new job on, okay, how do I turn this into an asset? Meaning that has to be something that's going to work for you in the long run, okay? And if you think about it, pain can be a liability, but I need to turn this into an asset. I thought about mothers against drunk drivers. That's a liability. That was something that was placed upon a mother, something that was very harmful, something that hurt her really bad. But she had to turn that around and make that thing work for her. So she created what we call Mothers Against Drunk Drivers. This is a support group that comes in to where we help other, other mothers or other family members get through the process of this. So it's a liability when it came in, 
It was something that hurt our heart, but I couldn't keep holding on to the pain of it, or I couldn't keep holding on to everything that comes along with a liability. How am I going to do that? Why are they, you know, and, and those are the beginning phases of the thing. But after a while, when that thing starts weighing you down and you're not getting up every day and, you know, next thing you know, you're very lethargic. You're not getting up combing your hair. You're not doing anything. You're not activating life. You know, that thing has really become a weight. And what you don't want is what you have brought into your life to become a weight to you. So you have to, what the Bible says, you got to count up the cause as to whether you can bring this liability to the table with you, you know, because some kind of way you got to make this thing work for you. In the business world, uh, what we always think about, and I think this is what makes it hard for people to, you know, step into whatever that next uh, vein is, there are going to be some liabilities that's going to have to take place. You're going to have to spend some money. Uh, you're going to have to meet new people. Uh, you're going to have to let people into your space to teach you some things or whatever so that it can turn into an asset later on. For example, if somebody came into, um, say, for instance, the people that come in that want to know, well, Miss Merrill, how do you go about getting this or that started, whatever, it is going to be a liability to you at first. You're bringing on something brand new into your life to turn into an asset, but it's going to be a liability at first because you don't know what all it's going to cost and, you know, all those kinds of things. The great thing about having somebody to walk you through it is that it does not be, a, it does not stay a liability. We want to teach you how to turn this into an asset. Okay. So I want to know how do I turn this around and make my money back pretty quickly. You need to know that because see, I, I can't take too many losses because I still got bills to pay. You know, I still have things that I need to manage, you know, so you got to understand that anything you're going to bring on at the beginning, it's going to be a liability. I think this is why a lot of people won't uh, step out uh, to do a whole lot, even like getting into relationships or, you know, asking God for, you know, uh, the things that you need in life because you start thinking about what it's going to cost you. Everything is going to cost you something, you know, just you know, cooking dinner is going to cost you something. You know, you got to go buy the food. You got to cook the food. You know, you got to clean up after you get through cooking the food. You got to put the stuff up. It's going to cost you something. But it's an asset because you came in, you were able to provide for your family. So I think it's the way we look at it. Uh, sometimes we look at things through uh, negative lenses too long, you know, and before long, nothing ever, uh, nothing ever comes out of that because in your world, everything is always a liability to you. You never thought about how to turn that thing into something greater. Even say, yeah, and, and also one of the things you want to, you know, kind of think about with that is, you know, um, you know, anytime, say for instance, uh, one of the things that I've seen um, is, is that people are not always aware of when something new has come into their lives. You know, one, you may not have asked for, you know, you know, things even for the right reason or whatever. And that thing becomes a weight to you. And you start thinking that everybody got to do it on your time. You know, you got to turn this into an asset to ask yourself, why did they come into your life? They have to be an asset to you. They have to be an addition to you. You know, it, it can't be, um, uh, you know, you know, always finding something wrong with it. I, I, you got to train your mind to do that because the, the more and more, um, I, I'll take for an example, um, when we were at the reading on Saturday and, um, you know, my creative mind was all in the middle of it, just thinking, you know, I think this is a, a great opportunity uh, to bring um, individuals together um, that really can process through what has happened in their relationships or whatever, which has become maybe a long-term liability, you know, because it's costing you time. It's, you know, uh, costing you new relationships. It's costing you, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know. You keep asking God for the same things over and over again. And it could be because you have not found that as value what you learn from it or whatever. So we're sitting at the table and we're gathering information and, and sharing with each other. But what happened, we were hitting spots to where we all were coming in to say, I remember that phase right there. You know, I remember what was happening in my life. 
And to be honest, this is a place to where we're trying to make this thing make sense to us. But oftentimes when um, I always say love has to be in the midst of whatever you do. See, because you can begin a thing and you really not know what the real purpose of it all is. You know, because to be honest, it could have been a reading for healing. See, because you before you can pour out anything to anybody else, it's got to make sense to you. It's got to bring healing to you. And so you have to sit down and stop and think, oh my God, what was going on? And then we realized that when the young lady wrote this particular manual that we were reading from, she wrote it a decade ago. There's a lot of things that have changed since then. But if this thing is still a liability to you, meaning there's still something that's bothering you about what happened, you know, what went on, you know, that's a time to where you have to learn how to turn the page and start asking the Lord to show me, God, what was going on. And that may be the real reason for the people coming to the table is to sit down like it was really like a big old therapy session because we had therapists in the room. Uh, we had we had all kind of people. And I'm like, Lord, what brought me to this table right here? But I like this because I want to be able to not have this as a liability in my life or to make it sound like it's a mundane thing because you've gone through a divorce or, you know, whatever. We want to find a way to make this thing work for you. So if so, and what I'm saying is you know once once life has happened to you okay and you didn't know that once you bring something on you gotta take something off you know you gotta go in and ask yourself the question all right i brought marriage in but what did i take out of my life i still got the same people in my life i got people that are always talking negative about things you know i have people that um really don't help me to see life through different lenses Maybe they don't have the testimony of a good marriage, you know, all those kind of things. And I forgot to take those people off and add the right people onto my life, you know. And, and I think we do this through this thing called loyalty of what I was talking about from the beginning. Sometimes we can be so loyal even to a fault that here you are praying, here you are fasting, here you are believing God. Here you are sowing and all these kinds of things, but you forgot to go back to God to ask the Lord, all right, God, give me the preceding word behind that. Loyalty is not the only word that you have in relationships. Obedience is something. And I'm talking about being obedient to God. Sacrificing is something, you know, you got to find yourself around individuals that can help you to understand, all right, this new thing called marriage. I've never been married before, or I've been married before God, and I'm seeing some of the same things. It's probably because you got the same thing going on. You brought in a liability, but you never turned it into any type of an asset in your life. And you've got to learn how to do that, or else it's going to be some casualties, casualties that take place with it. So this is something to think about, you know, um, this is this is what we call a liability to a spouse or to a partner or uh, maybe things have kind of uh, gotten, you know, out of out of I don't know. It's, it's out of sync. It's not even just with your mates. It could be anybody in your life. Anytime that the thought of something or someone uh, comes to mind to you and you got a frown on your face about them or you got an ache in your heart. Um, this that probably is a liability to you. It's a problem, okay? Every time I think about this person, that person you think about right now, it, it's probably some type of a liability that I haven't learned how to bring an asset to it. The asset is, you know, how do I help to bring a smile to my face when I think about this person? And when I think about that situation, mothers against drunk drivers, every time I think about it, it brings a frown to my face. That's a liability. Every time I got to pay bills, it's a, it, it brings a, fr a frown to my face. But what's going to bring a smile is to knowing that this thing is, 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 is working something. It helps me to pay my bills. It helps me to do that. And guess what? That job is an asset where it helps me to replenish some things. Mothers Against Drunk Driver, that's a liability. That's something that has hurt. 
but the support group is an asset. It helps me to get through this thing. It helps me to know that though I, 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 will, I will prefer not to pay these bills, but I do want to be with some light in the house. You know, I would prefer not to go through these things in a marriage, but I do want a partner. You understand what I'm saying? You got to find a way to turn it into an asset and not let, it, let everything become a troubled spot to you all the time. You got to go in and find out where is the liability, okay? The liability is right there what she says. It's in unforgiveness, okay? A marriage is going to be filled with people that's going to bring liabilities into your life because they're human beings. Family, they're going to bring liabilities in, but we got to find a way to turn it into an asset. I found myself asking um, uh, the Lord this uh, yesterday um, because I could see some things that may be um, they are liability. Anytime you make a decision about, you know, you know, anything where you're dealing with people, um, uh, you, you got to find a way to, even before you do things, you, you have to count up the cost uh, of that. And I said, God, you know, how do we, how do we turn that around? Because I always say anytime that uh, those things happen, that, you know, the enemy, he's got a way of coming in and trying to destroy relationship, family, comes in with a lot of it. And it's possible that you brought something in, but you didn't take something off. You can't bring all of you and all of your ways and all your thoughts and all of your fears and all that kind of stuff. When people come into your life, you got to believe that these people are coming in as an asset. So that means I got to take some stuff off. It can't be just the way that I want it to be. It's, it's got to make some changes. So, uh, and I know I'm saying a lot of things, what I am, what I'm learning, uh, what I am learning is that um, um, I'm hearing, I'm, I'm getting a lot of responses from individuals that um, they're having problems in their marriages. Um, and everybody got the same story. It's the same story. We're not counting up the cost of what's involved in a marriage or in a relationship. And what we're doing is we're, we're connecting with people that um, don't always see the relationship as value to them. They, they look at them being an asset to you, but you're not necessarily an asset to them. It's unbalanced, it's not gonna work out like it's supposed to. In some kind of way, uh, I think when, when the Lord when the Lord is 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 trying to bring acknowledgement of him into a situation, you always have selfishness that has to be moved out, you know, and, and it's amazing how everybody sees selfishness different. You know, my definition of selfish, selfishness may be you didn't give me what I needed. You were just being selfish. And my definition of selfishness could be that um, I'm I'm following what God is telling me to do. You know, uh, any 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 area where you're finding those words called selfishness coming at, they need to be examined through the Word of God. And and what you're having to do is you gotta you gotta challenge people. Okay, so let's let's identify what this thing called selfishness is, and let's line it up with the Word of God. That's the only way you're gonna break away from something. That's the only way that you're going to see this through clean lenses. Let's go back to what the word of God says. It, it, it's kind of like a, um, uh, a person that debates with you about religion. And they, they, they're, they're quoting a lot of things, but they're not necessarily quoting the word of God from the context of love. And normally this is where I always I always recognize what we're dealing with. We're dealing with individuals that are, um, they, they're, they are hearing the word, but they don't have a relationship with Christ. Does that make sense to you? You, you, you don't necessarily have the, the relationship with Christ, and this is what the Lord is really after. But you may be looking at it through a different lens, and you're seeing it as if somebody's doing something to me. No, the Lord is trying to get you to get that liability up out of you that everything is about you all the time. I'm the one about the groceries. 
I'm the one that cooked the food. You know, if it wasn't for me, well, I cooked the dinner today. Well, that's the first time you did it. That, 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 those are liabilities because you, they're, they're continued liabilities because you don't ever see what somebody else is adding to the equation. And we can get trapped up into situations that become long-term and you can't never figure way, figure your way out of it. And I promise you, there's always an, a missing element of Christ in it. So a lot of times what we find is that individuals, they're going to church. They're doing a lot. They're doing everything but developing a relationship with Christ. See, because the only way you're going to develop a relationship with Christ, you got to take something off. Me coming to Christ was one thing. But you got to learn how to take something off. It can't be your way and God's way at the same time. And either you're wanting to follow what he is saying or you want to follow what you're saying and you want everybody else to follow that. That's a liability. That's a heavy price to pay. And then you'll find yourself not really feel like, you know, everybody wants to have some assets in life. I'm not growing. I'm not learning. I'm not engaging. Why? Because everything, see, see, sometimes we're still dealing with the aftermath of things that have gone on in our lives. And no matter what anybody tries to bring as a correction point to that or to help you to see it through different lenses, you just can't see it the way they see it. Because I haven't learned how to turn liabilities into assets. All I see is what somebody did to me. The Bible calls it keeping score in marriages. And sometimes we don't realize that we may be the one that may be tearing down the relationship because you can't turn it into something that will work for your good. All right, so it happened, okay? You gotta find a way to make this thing work for your good. Okay, all right. And it ain't the easiest thing in the world just to humble yourself, you know, to say, all right, God. See, what I want is a lasting effect with this here. You know, all of my relationships, if they are not producing lasting effects, we're not doing that. We have to be, we, we have to be assets to one another because every day that we come together and join our lives, our stories together, whatever, we're going to be taking on somebody else's struggle, what somebody's going through. But at the end of the day, I need to leave with an asset with this thing. I need to leave feeling like, you know what? It was good that I had this conversation with them. It made me open up my eyes to see things, kind of took some things off of the table, whatever. Um, there was a uh, situation this weekend uh, that took place. Um, I had uh, left to, when I left um, Thursday, I was really just taking some time away. And so I took a drive to um, Houston. I did one of my, it's not Uber, it's another type of drive. And I I picked up this this family from the airport uh, from uh, Paris, France, and um, and we had two vehicles because uh, they had so much luggage, and you know the family was was big or whatever. And I had the mother and the two children in the car with me, and um, as we were you know going and we were just talking, you know, for a minute it made it like a liability because I'm you know having to do this ride or whatever. But I saw it as an asset because I always engage in the conversation to learn more. And it was a beautiful conversation before she fell asleep. They had been traveling for a long time, you know, whatever. And um, I had to understand that they had not rested. So, y'all, I took the opportunity. I put my music on. I listened to my replays. I did all that. And I always have to be in prayer when I, you know, get to family members' houses because I'm getting ready to take on what we call a liability Meaning I'm getting to hear everybody's troubles, problems, all that kind of stuff. But my thing is, Marilyn, every time you go, you got to find a way to turn this into an asset. It cannot always be, you know, uh, leaving with heaviness. And not saying that I always leave with that, but I'm trying to make sure that I don't leave with the heaviness of this. So anyway, uh, when, when I left, um, I always tell my sister, thank you for allowing me to stay over with you. Because I end up staying with my sister the night. And I said, thank you for letting me stay over with you. I appreciate the conversation. You know, I'm learning um, uh, not to add a whole lot, um, you know, to the conversations when you're talking to people, especially when they are 
venting or whatever the case may be, but being more of a listener and taking time to think through things because I have to uh, stop and think about, okay, what did that have to do with me? First of all, was there something I was supposed to learn out of it? And then also, is there something that I'm supposed to share? So anyway, I went on and I went to my brother. Y'all, my brother is one. He's one that he understand this thing called liability and asset. You know, it's like, you know, Marilyn's coming. She's coming in to do some things. And I want to add something to her life at the same time. See, that's because he's a he's an automatic giver. Everybody around you is not an automatic giver, y'all. That that I think that's what we're running into. We're running into a whole lot of assets, meaning they're taking, but they're not giving a whole lot. You find your best relationships when you find people that are givers also. But they also want to be at a point to where they feel like, you know, I can share some things with you and not make you, you know, not make you feel like it's too heavy for you or whatever, or uh, not be in competition or anything. So anyway, as we were going along, you know, I noticed my brother, when I tell you he cherishes every moment that you are with him, every little old moment, you know, we go to the grocery store and it felt good to see him laughing and you know, we were joking about a couple of things. And I said, this is what you call a liability and an asset. Now, I wasn't going to stay too long because I knew it could have easily turned, you know, to something else. But I want to, that's the way I want to be with people. I want to bring about a smile to your face and, you know, to help you to know that life does not have to be as hard. But I also need people to come into my life to tell me the same thing. What am I going with this? There are, there are going to be times to where, uh, you are pouring out into other people's lives. And what I prayed about yesterday is, Lord, I need people to pour back into mine. I don't always need to pour out to other people because eventually it'll feel like a liability. I need people to pour back into mine. And I heard the Lord say, it's yours for the asking. Have you even asked for that? Because you're so busy giving out to people that you don't always know that you need it too. And y'all, and I think it was when I thought about it, I said, you know what? I'm going to let somebody pamper me today. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to let somebody pamper me. And uh, when I went up, that's all the lady started doing yesterday. She just kept pointing into my life. She didn't even know what she was doing. She kept point, pointing into my life. And every now and then, because I'm an automatic giver, you know, I stopped for a moment and I, you know, let me, let me celebrate with her. You know, let me tell her how well she's doing, you know, um, and because you're trying to identify, can two walk together except they agree? You know, when I think about other times when I have come into uh, company with others and it became nothing but a liability is when y'all are always, you know, fricturing about, you know, what's to be done, you know, what are we not doing? And we come against each other. It's, it's crazy talk, you know, because we get, we get, we already know that we were coming in, we're coming in to bring something to one another, but we're also coming in to receive something also at the same time. I think that's all I'm trying to say to you guys this week so that we can get this week jump started in some great ways. I need you to think about the people that are in your space. Is this thing just a liability? Do they always leave you heavy or do they leave you filled up? And then another question you need to ask because things can be tricky. Do they just do this on occasions? And if they just do this on occasion, I need you to ask yourself the question, is this an even return coming back to you? Do you do it on occasions? If you do it on occasion, you're just reaping what you're sowing. But if this is something that is a part of your life, you need to get with some lifers, some people that are lifetime givers. You already know it's going to be asset. I'm in a liability when we come together. But we got to, I got to take off some things, what was all about me, somebody's talking about me, I got to take that off so that I can bring in some essential things to this to make this thing a little bit more beautiful. I think it makes for the best relationships in life, and we have to grow into those kind. I don't think that's something that you're just always just born into. I think you got to learn how to grow into laying aside. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews 12. Since you've been surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and every sin that's so easily besetting us. And that can be in a whole lot of ways. So I think my bottom line this week, I want us to start thinking about, you know, do you have some things that you brought into your life? 
okay? Bills, you bought a new car, you know, you, you're you um, thinking about marriage, whatever. What are you going to have to take off? What are you going to have to give in order for this thing to work like it's supposed to? One, I, I got to uh, get rid of my old ways. I got to get rid of my old conversation. You're in marriage and you didn't rid yourself of some old friends and you're wondering why the relationship keeps taking a hit. See, when you get rid of old friends, you got to bring in some new ones, people that are going the same direction that you're going in. That's the only, reason, that's the only way that relationship is going to take, I'm talking about take a lasting effect because if the only people that are popping into your life are individuals that are takers as well, your relationship is going to look just like that. So I want us to take a moment and I want you to think about, um, let, let's take a moment to do this. I want you to just get a piece of paper. If you have your phone, you could just use your um, uh, notepad or whatever. And I want you to think, I want you to think about the four people, just, just four uh, people that are very close to your life right now. And um, I want you to think about how at the beginning of the relationship that you realize that these people were bringing, that, that, that it was going to be a liability. It was going to be something that I was going to have to, you know, you got, I got to make room. Liabilities, you have to make room for that, okay? Purposeful ones, I have to make room for. And then did you make room for it? Did you make the adjustments? And what I mean was, did you make the adjustments to learn something from it? Or did you just say, well, I gave you a, a place to stay or, you know, I'm already, now I'm not talking about that. I'm not talking about school people. I'm talking about you brought the people into your life or you brought the thing into your life. Did you make the proper adjustments that you needed to make for that thing to become an asset in your life? Okay. That, that means you have to take away your um, experiences that you've had before. Okay. You, you gotta, you gotta know that there's purpose in everything that's being done. And if I did, I need to go back to the drawing board with each one of our relationships and find out have we become a liability to one another. Because if we have, nine, seven, ten, y'all bankrupting one another because you're not giving each other anything. It's because you didn't realize what y'all came together for. Everything that's on your job, that's everything. It cannot just be a liability only. There has to be an asset to it as well. Everywhere you go today, I want you to start thinking about this new thing that you're bringing to the table, an idea, a thought, or whatever. Have you made room for other people to come in to be a part of that? Or is it just you? And if it's just you, I guarantee you it's not going to last. You know, the relationship is not going to last. And when you think about it, has this always been the way you did things? So all four of those people that you got listed, stop to see, are y'all liabilities to one another? Are y'all giving to one another? Are y'all hitting and missing with your giving? Meaning I give and they didn't get nothing back to me, so I ain't giving nothing else. No, I need to know, did you, when you went in it, did you know that it was going to cost you something to get in it? And then did you find a way to turn it into an asset? How can we make this work for us? I see the needs that you have. You see the needs that I have. I speak the needs that I have. You speak the needs that you have. We come in to make sure we join forces with this properly so that we can grow. I do believe that this is where a lot of times relationships are falling apart. And it's not just male-female relationships. This has to do with just people in general. Find people in your life. Find you. Don't find people. Find you as being one, an understanding that everything has a beginning to it, but I want to know how to make it better. See, when you come into a home, that's a liability already. You got to pay them bills. You got to keep it up. You got to do that. But I need to turn this thing into an asset. First of all, I'm going to change the atmosphere, but I'm not going to leave you with bare walls. I'm going to come in and make this house a home. That's a lot. That's an asset to me. I'm going to make this house a home. Everywhere I go, it's going to have the fragrance of who I am as a person. You know, it's going to have my peace in the home. You know, it's going to have a touch of me. You know, some rooms I put pictures in. 
you know, um, I'm my, my walls, I don't crawl my walls, I don't do all that. You know, you, you bring love to your home. That's an asset to you. It makes you want to stay there. You know, it's, it, and, and when, when the bills get to come in, uh, the asset comes in to offset the bills. You know, uh, after a while, you won't even think about paying bills with that anymore. This thing brings joy to me. It brings value to me. And to be honest, this is how you overcome all of the hardness that takes place with the life that we have to live and the things that we have to go through. I got to see this thing as some type of an asset to me in some kind of way, because you don't see it as an asset. All you see is the trouble it brings to you. It's probably not going to work. Make your household a home everywhere you go. That means if I go on the job, you know what? I got to bring assets to this. I got to bring my little eclectic personality or my uh, different feel to this. That's when you know you've come to the right place. If it's not, listen, shake the dust and keep moving on. That's going to be a liability. Everybody looking for somebody to give something to. I mean, everybody looking for something to get, but they're not looking to give. You know, I hope I'm not confusing y'all with this. But it is, it's, it's a place where you have to start thinking about things. Am I just a complete liability in this relationship? I don't add nothing to it. All I do is fuss and complain all the time. That's probably why it's, why it's not working. You bankrupted. You have to start thinking about how this can become an asset here. How can we make this thing work? I'm telling you, just little things like that will change, a, will turn a broken marriage around. You don't have to take, it It doesn't take both of you getting the message. Or some of you saying, well, they should have been in here. Did. They're not the one here. You're the one here. So God knows that you are the vessel that can be used. So if you go in and realize, okay, I took the, I, you took our marriage. I knew it was going to cost me something. But let me make this an asset in my life. I want to find all the good that's in them. I want to find ways that I can keep sprucing up the marriage. You know, I want to get us out and go somewhere and do something. Because if you keep seeing all the wrong in it, I guarantee this all is going up will be is something wrong. You got to find something good that can take place with it. Amen. Well, I hope this has made sense to you guys. And uh, kind of, I know Mr. Harlan is going to come in with a, a different twist with it tomorrow to add a little bit more of the word to it. Uh, but I, I just want to kind of jog you just a little bit to start thinking about where you are in life. And what you're bringing to the table and who you are. Do you even feel important? You know, do you just let people just, you know, you know, they don't even evaluate you well. You're not discerning the pro the body properly. You're judging everything before time. Everything is a liability to you. You judge and talk about everything, criticize people. That's a that's a nuisance to me. Even when people do it under breath. You do it slight. You slight people. You make little, little, um, you make little, little smart comments. How is that asset? How is that bringing an asset to anybody's life? That just shows me you're real bitter on the inside. Because you ain't took on nothing but liabilities in your life. Nobody gives back to you. You always want, and you remind folks of what you did to them or what you did for them. Everything is a liability, no happiness, no joy. And then when you do try to bring happiness, it's not real. You got a fake smile on your face. How I know it's fake. It's fake when you can come and laugh in somebody's face and then you turn around and talk about them behind their back. How do you do that? Nothing in your life but liability. You don't see nothing good. Well, ain't nobody never said nothing good to me. Yeah. Yeah, because you, you waiting on somebody else to do it. You, in, in order for things to turn around in your life, you got to be the first partaker. You can't wait on everybody else to do that for you. So now it that you know, and then it makes up for people uncomfortable with being around you because they, you the only one don't know that you negative. You the only one that don't know. It. But every time you open up your mouth, ain't nothing but fire and 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 bitterness coming up out of it. Even in your smile, your smile is fake. I'm just saying, check, check what's around you. Nothing but liabilities. You don't see nothing but nothing wrong. Watch it. You're going to pay attention to this mess. The one I'm talking to, and I'm talking to me too, you don't find, you don't find nothing good. And that's the only way you're going to turn things around. That's what the Lord had me to do this weekend. You got to find something good in it. 
So if you don't find something good in it, it's going to continue to keep being a liability and you're going to keep on talking about it over and over again. It ain't going to never change. You can't put fire on fire and expect for something great to come out of it. You got to bring some type of valued asset to that. Amen. Well, I hope this uh, helps everyone. I know it has blessed me this weekend. Uh, and I, I look forward to God doing some other things too. And I think a lot of it came, you know, when you just make one decision, God, I choose me. I choose to bring not only, not, not only to see that life is not always going to be the way that I want it, but I also want to be able to bring something good to put on top of it and not be frustrated with life. I want to see it as what it can be. Not what it is right now, but what it can be. I want to speak life into that situation. I want to bring people around me that speak life. I don't want people around me that always got liabilities all the time. I always got problems going on. And I don't want to be in that space. And so the first change has to start with me. It has to start with us. And then it will flow down from that. Amen. Well, I hope that this has helped you guys on today. And uh, let's go out and make some changes in the world. You know, let's let's make some changes in our home. Let's make some changes in our mindset and uh, watch life begin to start looking a little bit better for you. And did not nobody else do nothing different? It was just you. That's all God wanted to do. Amen. Amen. Well, let's close out in prayer. We'll be back on tomorrow. I want to say thanks to you, that those of you that came in today. Uh, be sure to take that link and invite others to join in with us. Uh, I do believe we're turning some courage, y'all. We're pivoting and we're getting into a direction of where God really wants us to be. Amen. All right. Well, Father, we thank you this morning. We thank you for the joy of the Lord. That is our strength. We thank you so much, Lord God, for uh, just creating highways right in the middle of our deserts. We ask, Lord God, that you will continue to open up windows and pour out blessings, Lord, just for our asking. Uh, Father, I come back to pray over those seeds that were sown you know, that's been sown not just on this Friday, but they were sown all throughout the year. You know, the seed of even being in the room. I heard Miss Cookie say that this was her this was a year anniversary for her. You know, I even look at the seed of Mrs. LaDrie, but this is her birthday today. She made a sacrifice to come into the room. Uh, Father, there are many of them that are joining, even with coupling up with hosting in the room, those sacrifices that they're making. Father, let this thing turn around in a good way for them to let them know that all is not lost. Father, everything we do, you said, whether it be in word or in deed, that we make sure we do these things unto the Lord. And Father, we just thank you so much for your corrective hand. We thank you so much for your insight, teaching us not to do things on our own accord, but waiting on you. Because I know in the end, you make all things beautiful in time. Uh, Father, I'm praying for those that are um, um, double-minded. I don't know any other way to say it. They're double-minded. They're unstable in their thoughts. They're unstable in their ways. They're in one day, out the next day. They bless you with one mouth and Talk about people out of the next mile. But they don't call it that. But most people that have a stench on them, they don't know they have a stench on them. But we call in correction in today. And uh, Father, we're also calling in accountability. For those that those of us that may be sitting around those kinds of things, we're bringing correction today. By the Spirit of God, we bring in correction. We, we got some folks that are leaders, but for some reason they keep thinking they are a follower. They're not standing up in the God-given ability that you've given to them. That's because they're used to liabilities in their lives. They got so many liabilities, they're not even confident in their own self. I pray, Lord God, that you would give them a voice. Give them a voice that can be heard. And Father, help them to get away from things that continue to keep tearing them down. It's doing nothing but adding fuel to the fire. It comes against our confidence. It, it, it keeps um, stirring up fear on the inside. And we don't even know where it comes from. 
Father, I, did, I, I think this is one of those prayers that, you know, you either know it or you don't. You got to make some changes. We're going to bankrupt some relationships if we don't. Father, I even come to come to speak in, uh, I think, um, to the unaware. There's some that are just unaware. Just unaware of the um, daily actions. Um, not, not, not knowing that, you, you know, because we've been sitting in church for a long time. I'm not quite sure it's relationship, though. Because if a relationship, selfishness would be outside the window. And I'm praying today, Lord God, that we make a pivotal shift within this ministry. That anything that's not lined up with your word in our marriages, in our relationships, on our jobs, in our whatever, Lord, you make an, a, a correction with that. So that's not something man can do. If the spirit don't do it, it ain't going to be done. And Father, I just thank you. I'm going to leave this where it is right here. But these assets and liabilities, help us to deal with that, Lord God. I pray that you would take this message further than what I could take it. All week long, Lord God, let's unfold it and see if we can help our people become better. And Father, we thank you. We thank you already for what you're going to do. This is our 10%. We ask, Lord God, that you would receive this and bless the 90 the rest of the day. This is our 10% for the, for the week also. We ask you to bless the 90 the rest of the week. This is our 10% for our homes. We ask, Lord God, that you will bless the rest of it, Lord God, and we'll fail to give you glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining in today. And we look forward to seeing you back again on tomorrow. Don't y'all miss out. Come on and let's hear what the, what the Lord has to say all week long in Jesus name.